Our guest today, Cody Crowley, one of the top young fighters on planet Earth. Joe Tilly's great Canadian sports show, coming up! Our guest today is the pride of Peterborough. He is a two-time Ontario champion, former Canadian amateur champion, a Canada Games champion. As a professional, he is an undefeated welterweight with a perfect record of 21-0 with nine knockouts. He recently beat the world number one run-ranked IBF challenger. And on March 25th, he fights for the WBC welterweight title eliminator. Welcome to the program, Cody the Crippler. Crowley. What's up, guys? Thanks for having me on, buddy. That's uh, yeah, it's good introduction. To- too. <laughs> it's good to see you again, my friend. So glad you could do this. Uh, I know it's a really busy week for you. So, nah, I appreciate Clearly, it. I got uh, I got to yeah. keep my my roots connected, right? Right, right. At a boy. Thank you. Appreciate it. So uh, obviously, big fight, biggest of your career so far. Yeah, yeah, big fight. Um, I got a, a, a tough opponent in front of me, a guy coming to fight. He is very experienced. He has had quite a few exciting fights at the, the top level with some, some great guys. So there's, it's definitely no pushover standing in front of me. And I have my work cut out. Um, and I got to earn my spot. So, you know, another, another obstacle in the way for me to cross Right. So the headline of the card, David Benavides versus Caleb Plant. Uh, uh, three other incredible fights, of course. Yours, along uh, fighting uh, uh, Abel Ramos. And there's also Jesus Ramos versus Joey Spencer. Chris Colbert versus Jose Valenzuela. This is an action-packed card. Some have called this like one of the best fight cards we've seen in a long, long time. Maybe a decade. What are your thoughts on the show overall? Yeah, I think definitely this year, um, from the the opening fight to the main to the main event, it is very very action packed and uh, great competition. You know, a lot of fights you see a main event that's good, and the rest uh, the fights aren't that evenly matched. But this card from start to finish is fifty fifty, so it's it's a great card that is going to bring a lot of excitement that is coming to the mgm garden the number one spot in las vegas where the biggest fights have been so it just makes sense um that i'm fighting on it i'm excited uh and it's on my 30th birthday march 25th so the opportunity for the wbc eliminator um at the mgm garden on my birthday kind of feels like a a a gift perfectly wrapped that's just waiting for me to open. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, no kidding. So you mentioned your opponent, uh, Abel Ramos, uh, 25, 5, and 2, 21 knockouts. As you mentioned, he's, he's fought for the title before. He lost to uh, your Dennis Ugas. Uh, but he's uh, yeah. is it, you know, guy, a guy that comes to fight. Uh, what concerns you the most about Ramos? To be honest, no, nothing concerns me. I've I've been in there. I don't think that he can present anything I haven't seen before. So therefore, there's no there's no real concern. Um, the biggest concern I have is just making sure that Cody Crowley shows up, the best version of him. The only one who can beat me is is myself. So as long as I come, I've I've put in the work. You know, I've been training for this fight since July. Um, after my dad's passing, I got a call that I'd be fighting in September. So I rushed right back here, got in the gym. And ever since then, I've been getting told you're fighting in six weeks and then push back six weeks, six weeks, six weeks, opponent change, dates change, location changes. Um, but now we're finally here. So the only, the only thing that I got to worry about is bringing the best Cody Crowley um to the show i've put in the work i know i've put in the work 
Um, I'm coming in on weight. I'm coming in the, the most muscular I have before, the most prepped I've been. I've been boxing, you know, 12 four-minute rounds for a month and a half now, 50-minute um, sparring sessions. So I'm ready. And I'm, I'm ready to bring a barn burner exciting fight from round one to round 12. And I want to make a statement my first time at the MGM Garden that when Cody Crowley fights, um, there's going to be a lot of people standing on their feet. Your last fight was against uh, veteran Josecito Lopez. Uh, I, you were um, improved to 21 and 0 last April. It was your last fight. You've had the cancellation since. Now, Lopez handled uh, uh, John Molina Jr. He's fought Canelo Alvarez, but you handled him very, very easily and, and uh, looked impressive <laughs> doing so. Uh, you talked about the cancellations you've had. Does that affect you in any way, the fact that you've prepared to have a of course, for a of course, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, I don't think people realize what uh, what fighters go through in the preparation leading up to a fight. Um, not only the physical, but the emotional as well. You know, you're being told that you're going to fight in six weeks. Well, you, you cut off your whole entire life. You know, you cut off your friends, your family. You go into this focus mode and you just absolutely kill your body, then, you know, uh, they say, oh, never mind, you're going to fight a month and a half later. Oh, never mind, two months later. Um, not understanding that, you know, you just, you completed a job, you got ready. That's like me asking a guy to come and build a house for me. And he builds the whole entire house. And a week before it's finished, I tell him, oh, you know what? Nah, I don't change the plan. <laughs> We're gonna. I want you to build a house down the street and have it ready in two months. But I'm not even paying you for the first one. Um, I know that you just spent, you know, 150 grand in material uh, to build it and to get it ready. But you're not getting paid for that one. I'm sorry. Uh, so people don't people don't see that. People don't see the money put in behind training camp. Um, the sacrifices made. The the what, what you put on the table. So has it affected me? Of course. I haven't, I haven't got paid for my work in a year, but every single day I feel like I go out there and I work harder than anybody else. So that takes a toll. So you can say I'm hungry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can channel that energy into being hungry for sure. And you know what? Uh, the, the uh, Before you had the fight with Lopez, this is the fight that turned a lot of heads. It was a 10-round unanimous decision over a previously unbeaten Kudratilo uh, Abdukakarov of Uzbekistan. And, you know, he IBF heading in. You were a four-and-a-half-to-one underdog in this fight, but you absolutely dominated him. You had him in trouble in the second round, buckled his knees. Uh, it looked like you might finish. You didn't finish it, but you did dominate the fight, and you won, uh, and you were on the attack for the entire fight. At the end of the fight, Abdukakarov was a beaten fighter. You took unanimous decision over a guy who was ranked seventh in the world. And of course, now uh, you are a guy who's sitting on top of the world in terms of rankings. Um, now, you're now, right now, you, you're ranked currently a number three contender by the WBC, number four by the WBO, and number nine by the IBF. When I was a kid, I remember picking up the Ring magazine and looking at all the different rankings and looking for the Canadians in the rankings all the time. It was always fun to see that. And it's, it's fun to see you in there ranked in, in, in those three governing bodies very high. And, of course, what happens if you win this fight? Uh, I win this fight, and my next fight is for the WBC world title. It's a, I, I'm the mandatory. So whatever happens, um, if Earl keeps his belt, um, I'm his next mandatory for the WBC. So within 12 months, I might have to, you know, sit on the bench and wait until, uh, that 12 month mark comes to a closing before, um, it gets put into action. But, you know, I've been fighting once a year, so I don't mind waiting for my shot any longer. Um, but it looks like Earl, uh, is going to move up. I don't really see him fighting at 47 again. Um, the only one would be against Crawford, but that seems to be pretty hard to make with the powers that be. So 
I, I have a feeling that he's going to vacate, which makes me the mandatory. Um, so I believe I'll be fighting for that WBC title uh, sometime in the summer. When we, if, uh, if everything goes uh, according to yeah. plan like that. Right. So uh, you went, you said last time we talked to you that your dream fight would be Errol Spence Jr. Uh, is that still, would that still be your dream fight? Yeah, I would still love to fight him. Um, I believe that he is at the top of the pyramid, um, the top of the food chain. So, you know, I'm the type of guy that I, I want to earn everything that I get. So if I want to become the greatest fighter in the world, I want to beat the greatest fighter in the world. And he has been on top for so long that it's, it's gave him, you know, that pound for pound recognition as being a legend in the sport and one of the greats. And it's, it's one thing to win a world title, but it's another thing to be able to go in there against a legend in the sport who people re will remember long after he's gone and to be able to say that you were the one to knock him off. That's, that's what I'm after. When you, uh, right. I'm after, I'm after trying to do things that aren't supposed to be done. Um, to prove that, you know, anyone is capable of anything. A small town kid from Duro, tiny little country town in Ontario, Canada, can make it to the highest pinnacle in the world of professional fighting. And that's just, that's just an expression of what I'm doing. But you can take that same drive, that determination, that will to win, and that heart and use it in any expression and become the greatest in the world at whatever you desire. So that's, that's really what I'm trying to prove and to show and to lead by example. You know, I don't do much talking. I'd rather, you know, uh, show what I do. And uh, from my first fight at 13 years old, be, being beat by a girl to now being you know, God willing, win a world title this year, that, that proves that anyone can do anything. It's not about God-given talent. It's about something way stronger than that, which is your heart and your will to win. You know, uh, you talk, talked about that before last time we talked to you about losing your very first fight to a, a girl when you were 13 years old. And, and uh, you, you've come a long way from, from that point, no doubt about that. Uh, so now, uh, you know, you talked about coming from Duro, Peterborough area, and then now uh, the move to Vegas. No regrets about that move. It was a move you felt you really had to make, isn't it? Yeah, had to. Um, like, like I always said, I wasn't blessed with God-given talent. And the resources that were provided for me at the small local amateur gyms in Ontario um, they were far few and in between. And I felt like in order to become the best, you know, being the best in Canada is one thing, but when you measure that up to, you know, the U S amateur Olympic team, the, 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 the gap in difference of skill and competition is so, so there's so much room in between. It's so different that um, I knew I need to put myself in the best possible environment to be successful if I'm going to give this a go. And even if I put myself in the best possible environment in Ontario, in Canada, well, that wasn't the best in the world that I could put myself in. And I wanted to become the best in the world, not the best in Canada. So it's not like I you know, wanted to I never wanted to leave my family, my friends, um, the local gyms that I were a part of. It was all fantastic. I loved everyone. But I needed to sacrifice that in order to make myself the person I am today. Yeah, and you know what? I don't think you have any qualms about that now. Is Vegas starting to feel like home for you? Yeah, yeah, Vegas is home. Um, I don't know how much longer it will be for home, you know, um, living in the desert for eight, nine years, I'm getting dried out. I'm ready for some <laughs> tropical weather. Um, so I'm looking, I'm looking after this fight to possibly, uh, you know, relocating to, 
either Florida or Costa Rica, um, so, somewhere like that. And I put myself in a position now where I can come back here for training camp, you know, um, or host training camp wherever in the world I want to and bring, bring my team with me. Um, so Vegas is home um, at the moment, but I'm not too sure how long it will be home after this fight. So let's talk about your team. Ibn Kaysen, uh, you hooked up with him when you went to, to uh, Vegas. Uh, he's the younger brother of Haseem Rockman, uh, who knocked out Lennox Lewis, as many fight fans will know, uh, to win that linear title. The Rock had all the belts at one time and would later win the title again. And both uh, you and, and, and Rockman have the same manager as well, and, and Steve Nelson. Uh, Steve said that you have the ability to outwork anybody. That is clearly your strong suit, isn't it? Yeah, clearly. And that, that isn't something that was just gifted to me. That was something that uh, I started working at from a very, very young age. I knew when I was a little kid at 14, 15 years old that I didn't have the boxing IQ or the speed or timing. But one thing I do have is a bell, a timer. And I know that if I can keep pushing those limits and as soon as that bell rings, work harder than anyone that I see around me uh, until that bell stops, um, that I'll, I'll be successful. And eventually that battery just grew and grew and grew and grew. Um, you know, I can go run 10 miles any day of the week, 15, 20 miles any day of the week, run a marathon on, on call, on notice. Um, but that was due from years and years, a decade of me pushing myself and building that battery every day. Um, you know, this fight, I was boxing 12 four minute rounds, uh, for a month and a half. Um, that's like 15, 16 rounds of sparring with, you know, three different sparring partners. So I've, I've definitely built a battery that I don't think many people can hang with. Um, and I, I do know that sometimes in the past, I've got in my emotions and worried about just suffocating people and beating them that way. But I'm maturing as a fighter and I'm starting to understand my own power, my own timing, and when to put my foot on and off the gas. And I feel like now I'm at the point where I'm able to suffocate my opponents, but then be able to, at the same time, still find the placement and the proper punches to get them out of there because at the end of the day that's what people want to see you know they want stoppages they want knockouts and i feel like the the later half of my career is when the knockouts will start coming they weren't very um they weren't very high at the start frequent but now yeah. as i'm now as i'm maturing um i feel like that that's going to become a lot more well, anybody who's watched any of your more recent fights will certainly pick that up. But there's two words that come to mind when I watch your fights. It's relentless pressure. I mean, you don't give these guys a chance to breathe. And, and uh, you don't no. give them a chance to reload, and you'll give them a chance to breathe. Yeah, right. and I, you know what? I grew up watching um, fights. Like, you know, I grew up watching the Rocky movie. Um, and just that whole will to win and never quit and that relentless um pace that even rocky would keep you know he was getting hit all the time but he would just keep coming forward he would eat a punch and keep coming forward um guys like Arturo Gotti, who is a legend for having those wars and those battles um i've always seen that in my mind and strive to be like that and i feel like i i will i, I will leave an imprint uh in boxing for a guy who meets people at the center of the ring and doesn't back up. And the more opponents that accept the Cody Crowley challenge and meet me at the center of the ring and don't move and fight in a phone booth, the more exciting the fights are going to be, um, which is, is the reason why we're fighting. You know, people are spending their money, their hard earned money that they've worked for all year long just to come and watch this fight, not to see two guys run around the ring or play it safe uh, just to win a round, right? This is entertainment. It's a gladiator pit. 
So every time I step in the ring, I want to be remembered as a gladiator and a warrior. And a warrior, you are no doubt about that. And, and you know, sparring has a lot to do with the, your preparation. And, you know, you sparred, I know being in Vegas helps a lot, but you sparred with some 20 world champions, including Floyd Mayweather. I know more recently you sparred with Adrian Broner. Uh, you know, you've had a chance to work with a lot of these guys. There was a time uh, uh, that uh, Steve Nelson said that maybe one of your upcoming opponents might be Broner. But uh, what? how has that uh, helped you in terms of sparring and, you know, learning a lot from, you know, some of these, some of these veterans. Yeah. Um, you know, Broner is actually someone I've never, I've never boxed. I've never oh, okay. boxed I'm sorry. I thought you, yeah, yeah, um, but yeah, over 20, 25 plus 30 world champions, Floyd, Chris Algieri, Timothy Bradley, Javante Davis, um, Broly, um, Jorge Linares, uh, Francis Bartholomew, Edward Troyanowski, um, Jared Hurd, the list goes on and on. Um, but I feel like that experience of everything I gathered was something that I will always take with me. Um, every one of those sparring sessions, um, those camps that I was involved in, I was, I, I was fighting for my life. You know, I was always the underdog, um, but yet I'd be going 12 rounds with them. So it wasn't like a sparring session for me. I was treating it like I was in a real fight. There was no difference between a sparring session and a fight. So I may only have 21 fights on paper as a professional, but I, I have over two, 300 fights with world champions that uh, you, you can't take away from me. So I feel like every time I walk into a ring, like there's nothing Abel Ramos can present that I haven't already seen before. Um, and it's usually those, that unexpectedness that catches people off guard that makes a fight difficult for them. Um, but I do know that every one of those world champions that I've been in the ring with, they all say that they've never had the pressure put on them like they have with me in there. So I do know that every opponent that I face, I am bringing something new to the table and that's, a pressure that he's unable to train for. Yes, I remember talking to you before, and you mentioned sparring and, and working with uh, Floyd. And you know, you, you said that with Floyd, it's like he's playing chess, and everybody else is playing checkers. It's like he's a step ahead of everybody's. Yeah, he's he's yeah, getting, yeah, getting a little deeper. Almost, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost not not fair. Um, you know, it's like a university student coming to an elementary class. You're gonna be making jokes and picking on kids and doing stuff that just goes right over their head that they don't even realize you're doing. Um, and then you come back and capitalize on it. You teach them one thing, show them something else and come back, come back to the first thing you taught him, but he doesn't even remember. Um, it, it's, it's a whole nother level that Floyd has mastered. Uh, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing to watch. and It's a beautiful thing to experience. And that's one of the things I learned from him is it's not all about muscles, speed, strength, um, or even conditioning. It's about, it's not the car, it's about the driver behind the car. And, you know, Floyd, even at 40 something years old, um, I believe he can go in there and beat some of, some of the best fighters today if he came out of retirement. Um, that's just the type of skill set that he has and the reason why he's uh, a legend and always will be a legend. So I'm very grateful for the couple of nuggets that he dropped for me that I got to put into my toolbox and that I get to use now. You talked about, uh, you know, rising to the you know world championship and that's down the road and not the not too distant future. What's important for you outside of the ring? What is, have you made uh, for your personal goals outside of the ring? Um, biggest thing in my life right now is just about being happy uh, and enjoying life. I've, when I moved here, a decade decision to uh, eat, breathe boxing and have nothing out of it. Um, it, it takes a toll on the the being inside and i'm i've realized that in 2019 
when a lot of my career I've been fighting sick. And that's because I've been ignoring, uh, you know, the little, little kid inside that wants to come out and play and wants to uh, have great relations with people. And it put me on my deathbed. You know, in 2019, I was, I, my autoimmune conditions were so bad. I remember one fight, I, you know, I'm laying in bed crying hours before because I don't even have energy to stand up, but I got to go and box 36 minutes against uh, mm. an opponent punching me back and I can't even hardly stand. Um, poop and blood, my disease, uh, my adrenal shot, um, crazy neurological issues, um, just very, very bad on my deathbed where I just didn't really want to live anymore. And now I'm starting to realize that there is a lot more outside of boxing. Um, there's a lot more to Cody Crowley than just the fighter in the ring that people see. And I slowly want to start allowing that, that person to come out and uh, blend in with the fighter and the warrior. So my main mission right now is to be to do things I love. And one of those things I love is boxing. And when I do it, I do it very well. But there's a lot of other avenues I want to go down and help and use a lot of my time and energy. One of those is helping other people with their nutrition, with their health issues, um, and bringing their own bodies back into balance. Uh, a lot of things I see today with how society is run um, and how people just operate like sheep is due to the contamination in their body. Um, and, you know, you can't see through murky water. So if the body's contaminated and it's toxic, so is the brain. To be able to make smart decisions. Um, so I really enjoy helping people become healthier, happier, more thriving versions of themselves. Well, you know, that's... that's the yeah, whether that be through nutrition, uh, movement, uh, meditation, breath work, all sorts of different modalities to kind of bring them back to themselves. Right. I've been following some of your, your postings, too, and seeing, you know, you know, video of you meditating and stuff. And, and you know, I, I'm big into meditation. There you are. I'm big into meditation myself and, and, and uh, you know, and, and, uh, following that type of path. But. You know, you, you talked about your your um, your uh, physical, you know, uh, going through some tough physical challenges and also emotionally. I mean, uh, you know, last June, your, your father passed away. He completed suicide and, and, and a difficult, uh, you know, thing for, for, for someone to go to uh, go through. For someone who's, who, who lost a child, I, I understand that. Uh, what loss is like and, and uh, to go through what you did with your father, what did you take or what have you taken from the, his journey that you, you use for your own? Um, the same reason why I said I'm, I'm focusing on being happy and not being uh, this machine robot that just fights is because um, that seems to be a very common thing when we just, do what we're supposed to do. We stay in this box that we've created about who we are, what we do, how we live life. Um, and we don't express the, all these feelings that we have inside and all these uh, repressed memories, repressed feelings from our past. Um, those, those things start growing and those things become demons and those things start eating away at the person. And that was one of the things that, I, I believe happened to my father was, um, you know, not being able to deal with and work through things that happened to him as a child and how he was raised and filter those emotions out and those traumas. And then you have, you know, the, the weight of society and providing for your family and trying to, trying to be a good husband, a good father. Um, it becomes it becomes a lot on somebody, and we're seeing a lot a lot more of that today, where people just crack, they break, and they feel easy to go and um, pull the pull the trigger and exit the game than to be here and work through it. 
So one of the biggest things that I've done in this training camp is use his tragedy um, as a way to raise awareness about mental health, raise money, and also provide lifelines for people that if they're ready to do the work, if they're willing to get help, they can reach out, um, call. Um, I teamed up with a, a great group called Team 55 Suicide Awareness out of my hometown of Peterborough, where that's what the, the funding does. It provides um, therapy for people who can't afford it, and different healing modalities, um, and s- sets people up on a program to, to recover from their mental health, to get them better and to open up and talk about their issues and, and, and keep growing as a person instead of um, rotting away and deteriorating. So where do you, I, I feel, no, sure. Go ahead. I, I, I feel on. like um, that was the greatest way to honor my father um, is to, is to shed light on, on, on the mistake that he made. Mm -hmm. So, so other people don't do the same mistake. Mm -hmm. Where, um, I was going to ask you, where, where, where do you go for your emotional, spiritual guidance to, to, uh, to, uh, get to a better place? Do you have people that you talk to or is it uh, therapy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, um, you know, like, like I said, about two years ago, um, well, in 2020, actually, uh, that's I was on my deathbed. And all of a sudden, I started um, meditating and doing breath work myself. And I started reaching these different states internally where I could see memories of my past that I didn't even know existed that I just blocked out. Um, and I started opening up and sharing more. Um, sharing more with my family about it. Um, and then also when I realized that I I needed more help, I've, I've went to different counselors, different therapies, um, different plant medicines that help aid you in, in, in healing your nervous system from past experiences. Um, it kind of, it's a, a loaded question. There's there's a lot of things that I've used um, to help me, uh, but one of the biggest things that I can say to people is to talk more, to be open, and to clean out the body. That's why I said the nutrition is one of the major parts, um, because mm-hmm. if the body isn't operating right, uh, the the mind won't operate right, and a lot of a lot of the foods that you know we're eating today we got we got grown mothers who are feeding their children every day you know fruit punch and different everyday drinks that are proven with that have proven ingredients to cause degenerative brain brain damage and diseases inside these children that you know um the mother doesn't even know that they're doing that will cause the child to have more of these mental health issues. Um, I believe a lot of it is stemmed from how we're living um, and how we're feeding the body on a daily basis. So one of the biggest things I can say to people is speak, reach out for help, and then work on your own health, which you don't need anything for. Pretty much all that is what we do to ourselves. Right, a lot of vices is the food, is the drinks. Um, we're an organism. We're a flower. What happens when a flower gets what it needs? It needs sun, water, and oxygen. It blooms mm-hmm. beautifully. Um, if it doesn't get one of those, if it has all those things, but it uh, starts deteriorating and holes start creating in the leaves and it starts dying, well, that's from toxicity. That's from an external force. Well, we're humans. We get sunlight. What we need to live is sunlight, water, and oxygen. We get all those. So what's causing the diseases? What's causing the mental health? It's coming from an external factor, which is either what we see, what we hear, or what we ingest in our mouth. 
So we don't need, you don't need money to cancel out those things. You just need to be more aware of what you're putting in your body. And it's sad to say, but nowadays, you know, you wake up in the morning, your largest organ, you're putting three or 400 chemicals on it just with your shampoo, conditioner, and body wash and brushing your teeth before you get your, um, your, your coffee or your breakfast into you. Um, so we have toxicity coming at us from all directions. And then you go outside and you got chemtrails in the skies. You have just a whole bar and then you got to be at appointments and then, and then school and this, that, and that's just taking the nervous system right out of, um, its original state, um, where, you know, we, we have a nervous system to self-regulate and help us in danger when a bear is attacking us or we got to fight for our lives, which, you know, might be once a month or a couple times a year, but we live in such a hostile environment um, now with society that that nervous system gets kicked on and people are living in survival for one, two, three, five years, 10 years. Next thing you know, that it's their whole entire life that they've been living in survival mode where their body's just deteriorating. So there's many, many factors um, that I believe mainstream uh, health isn't looking at that we can take charge of ourselves without um, things that cost a lot of money, you know? Yeah, we're, we're cutting us off from that sunlight. It's like I cut myself off sometimes from the sunlight of the spirit because I'm too worried about specific, uh, you know, material things. And, and that, that's a problem for me. But, you know, and, and when you talked about, you know, the mistake that you're, 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 you're and it's like, I remember being in that pit of despair and, and you, you, you come to that point where you think that you can only see you're blinded, you're, you're, you're tunnel, tunnel vision, you can't see out of it. When you start asking for help, you start reaching out, there, you, you'll, you'll start to realize that there is a way out. There is a way out, even though at the time it doesn't seem like, seem like there is. But you recently, yeah. uh, you held it. Held it, held it. Let's go ahead and finish that thought. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, a, lo- a lot of people just need to not be so scared to ask for help and to let people know that they're hurting, that they're broken, that, you know, there's, there's a, they wake up every day and they go, you know, they, they have a family, um, they have a job that they go to, um, they might go to, you know, a men's league hockey game once or twice a week. They have all these things that they're waking up and going to, but they're, they're afraid to tell people that actually inside they're not doing okay. Um, they -hmm. feel like they're dying and they're hurt some way, some shape or form. And I think we need to let people know, especially males, that it's okay mm. to be vulnerable and it's okay to let people know that you're hurt and you're broken. I myself mm-hmm. right now, uh, from my dad, I'm hurt. I'm broke. Um, you know, I've, I've made mistakes. Um, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with the separation of my wife right now. Um, I, I reach out to a lot of people for help on a, on a daily basis because if I didn't, I, I wouldn't be here because just like every other person, we're all going through things on a daily basis, big or small. Right. And you know what? It, it's, you know, like Michael Lansberg talks about sick, not weak. It's like, you know, it, it takes, a, it takes a lot. Uh, it, it, you got to, you know, to tackle those old ideas that we're supposed yeah. to shut up and suck it up and all that other BS. It's like, it takes a lot. It takes, honestly, it takes a real man. To stay. Yeah, I feel like you need feel. to not, not shut them up and forget about them. You need to feel them uh, mm-hmm. and work through them in order for those old stories, those old patterns those old memories to not have an effect on you anymore and for you to be here, be happy, be healthy and living in the present moment, not the past or the future. 
Um, but a lot of us have a lot of baggage that we carry mm-hmm. around and it's not going to be pretty going through it, but I feel like we all have to go through it in order to come out on the other side. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, yeah. Honestly, it's short-term pain for long-term gain. And, and the pain's greater if you hold it in, right? The pain is, is, is greater if you hold it in. And, um, but you, you just held a fundraiser recently to, to, to talk about ending the stigma of mental health in partnership with, with your Team 55 uh, Tackle Suicide Awareness. And here we are, Team 55, you raised $18,840 for suicide awareness. Pretty good, first time out of the gate. Uh, and tell yeah. us about your prize winners. Yeah. That was only, um, that was about two weeks of work that uh, my amazing family, my mother, her brother, um, other locals in the Peterborough area that teamed up together and just started selling tickets. And next thing you know, you know, 10, 12 days later, there's almost $20,000 raised. So it, it, it's pretty amazing what a, a small little group of people can do in a short, limited amount of time. And I can, I'm, planning and will continue to reach that goal that we set for this year, which is $55,000, um, which I believe can go and help out a lot of people who are going through um, the same things that my father was going through and they can get help. Uh, we also teamed up with WBC Cares, which is uh, their outreach program. And they got to help us um, provide some pretty cool gifts. You know, we got signed boxing gloves from uh, Chavez from Alberto Duran. Um, who else? We got, uh, Jerry Cooney and Larry Holmes when they fought. Uh, I signed a pair, a couple other fighters signed a pair. We got hotels and, uh, airline to jump on board and provide, uh, two airfares, uh, two hotel rooms and floor tickets to, uh, my next fight, also the Plant Benavidez wow. card, which is a spectacular fight. So, you know, someone from Peterborough who may not be able to afford that, um, just by them going and helping someone else now is able to jump on a plane and have an awesome weekend in Sin City watching uh, the boxing mecca. So oh. it just goes, I, I believe it's a win 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 all around just by people. Um, doing good things and coming together. It's pretty awesome. You know, what, what you did was, it was amazing. And, and, and Cody, you, you know, you're, you're, you're a Canadian hero. No doubt about that. Um, I want to talk about, um, uh, you, you mentioned that, uh, you know, you can help people out in terms of you're, you're able to share your experience when it comes to a suicide uh, recovery from being, having a family member to go through that. Uh, you can follow Cody on Facebook, Cody Crowley, Instagram, Cody Crowley Boxing, and Twitter, Crippler16. And, uh, you know, you can reach out to Cody. You can help him uh, reach his goal of uh, $55,000 for uh, uh, suicide awareness and mental health. And you can, uh, I'm sure, Cody, and t- ask him about, uh, about uh, helping you out with your with your uh, yeah, supplements or super, your fit, you know, health. Yeah. Yeah. A super, uh, super great way for people to start working with their mental health, I believe is to clean out their body. And I created a website specifically just for that. Um, Cody Crowley.com where people can go to it and they can get everything they need for a very simple organic cleanse to uh, totally eliminate toxicity coming in their body while flooding it with vital micronutrients that the body needs to function on a cellular level. Um, 30-day packages that people can go to with no experience. This is for any and everybody. Um, They will benefit tremendously from. uh, Most people lose, typically a lot of people, you know, they, they think of weight. They only think of unhealthiness as weight. So a lot of people that you know have more weight tend to jump on this more than skinny people, even though toxicity is toxicity. But the average person is losing about 25 pounds um, a month 
uh, through, through these cleanses. Um, nothing, no magic pills, just clean, organic nutrition uh, that the body needs to function and run. Uh, so people can jump on that website. I created it just to specifically help people. Um, and they can also shoot me a DM if they have any questions. Um, it's pretty easy to run yourself, but if you have questions, you can always reach out and I'll do the best to get back to people when I can. Cody, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I know you've got a busy week coming up the way in and everything else, but, uh, uh, if you're, if you get a chance, pick up the pay-per-view on Saturday night and watch Cody, the crippler Crowler Crowley get that much closer to, uh, to a world title. Good luck to you, my friend. Good luck to you. Thank you, brother. Have a great day. Thanks for having me on. All right. And uh, I love all my Canadians. So thanks for the support. And I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, Cody. Thanks, buddy. More sports when we come back. My Coastal Swiss pick of the week. Well, last week I took no money, honey, in Thursday night's fourth at Mohawk. You're pretty good shape. Maybe using a little too much to try to grab the lead in the final turn. Right the rules with Scott Young in the buggy. Blew by in the stretch. No money, honey. Had to settle for second. But I also had the exacta. This week, I'm looking at Thursday night's fifth race at Mohawk. Maple had a strong finish. First time out for the tough post. Louis-Philippe Wah will drive. Two across Marion and Lady Jess will also merit some consideration. So I'm going with the 489 Exacta and Trifecta. For all the racing updates, visit Costa TV on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Go to hpibet.com for your wagering options. Joe Tilly Sports is brought to you by COSA, Central Ontario Standard Bread Association, providing a united voice for harness horse people racing at Ontario tracks. Check out your benefits today at COSAonline.com and check out COSA TV on Facebook and YouTube for all the latest harness news and live action updates. Live racing year-round. Go to HPIBet.com for all your wagering options. Become a member today and your first bet is free. That's HPIBet.com. Addiction Rehab Toronto, Toronto's number one alcohol and drug treatment center, saving lives, Reuniting Families, the only treatment center in the province to offer medical detox, treatment, sober living, and lifetime aftercare all in one place. Our unique and specialized programs are designed to equip our clients with the tools to successfully lead a life of dignity, respect, and purpose. Let us help save your life or your loved one's life. Call today for more information or to facilitate an intervention. one 855 787 2424 or visit addictionrehabtoronto.ca <laughs> Do you know why that happened? You didn't fix your ball mark. The birds around here are very protective of the course and when people don't take care of it, this is what happens. It's pretty simple. Just find your mark, fix it, and at least one other. Hey, look at the bright side. We're not up on the northern course. They've got bears and moose. And we want to thank all the folks who make this show possible. These are friends, trusted business associates, and all around great people. We highly recommend them all. Thank you for your support of Canadian and local sports. A reminder, the show is available on Breaker, iTunes, Spotify, Radio Public, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, as well as the Spanglish Network, Zingo TV, and Buzz TV Live. Also, check out the show on YouTube. All of our past great shows are there, available. Like and subscribe. It's absolutely free. Thanks once again to Cody Crowley for being on the show. Good luck, champ. We'll see you bringing that title home real soon. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Do you want to buy or sell a home? Could 31 years of real estate experience help you? Why not speak to an amazing team that loves to overpromise and overdeliver? 
Aldo has a tremendous team of experts on staff. They are committed to making your next real estate transaction smooth and comfortable. Call 416-GET-ALDO or visit getaldo.com. Brian Gribben Insurance Planning, helping you solidify your financial future. At BGIP, what we do that's unique in the marketplace is we show people how to spend and enjoy their money in their early years of retirement without the fear of running out. Also, we're able to do this without you having to change financial advisors. Please look us up at bgip.ca today. Let's book a 30-minute phone call to see how we can bring value to you and your family and your planning. Call Brian today for all your retirement needs. We did. 905 686 Five six seven eight. MNP, a leading Canadian national accounting, tax, and business accounting firm. MNP proudly serves and responds to the need of their clients in the private, public, and nonprofit sectors. Through partner-led engagements, MNP provides a collaborative, cost-effective approach to do business and personal strategies to help people and organizations to succeed across the country and around the world. With local offices in Oshawa, Mississauga, Burlington, and more, their team is here to support you. Visit mnp.ca today to learn more. Guests on Joe Tilly Sports receive a gift certificate from Classica Imports. Top of the line, imported men's clothing. Check out the Classica Essential Collection now. Go to shopclassica.com.